Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do another highly requested video. It is a little bit different. I'm going to show you my junk, take you down into the garage, show you my stash of furniture. I'll take you through my office and show you how I organize smalls and doodahs, bits and bobs <laughs> to stay efficient as a maker. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button. YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. I love to go thrifting, junking, and then I take those finds and I upcycle them into beautiful home decor. You can find that home decor and the products I use over on my website, Upcycled by Bree. Com, but I will leave all of that down in the description box below because we need to go get organizing. So I've been told before that I am one of those unique crafters and uh, not super messy. I mean, I can make a mess, but I love to keep my things organized. So when I'm showing you my videos today, I'm going to be using my brand new label maker to make tiny adorable labels for all of my junk. So this is the Mun Bin label maker. It's Bluetooth. It's going to connect and sync up with my phone. Super easy to use. I'm gonna get it fully charged again and we'll show you how to use it. There's gonna be some special promos down below in the description box, so make sure you check that out as well. So here is a look at my wood stash amongst a few other storage things. My power tools will line up right here in front of the wood. I noticed for sure that this could use some organization. I do this type of cleaning and organizing every few months or so. I'm rearranging all of my wood stash, cleaning the shelves really well, and putting it back in a way that I can see everything when I'm looking at the shelves. I also will stop and write down ideas as they pop into my head while I clean. I keep my bits and pieces of metal down here as well, so I like to go through those, check and see what I have, get rid of any trash, and get inspired. Notice I am wearing my Craftsman gloves. I don't want to cut my hands on all of this rusty metal. I needed to pull a few of these spindles out for some orders that had been placed and then I will put the rest away with all of my salvage pieces. And then I had a box of random salvage pieces, things that I knew just weren't going to be in of any use, so I went through that and threw away what I didn't need. These are the little pieces of scrap I do keep. This is exactly what I try to replicate constantly. Much, much better. Now I can see everything, all of my wood is over here instead of scattered all about. So I have all of my backer boards, some big tall barn wood I haven't really broken down. There is hey Nisi, smaller pieces of barn wood, all my one by ones or one by twos, all my metal stashes in one spot. And then windows on one shelf, that way when it's time to pull them out and power wash them, they'll all be right there in plain sight. And look how gorgeous this shelf came out. I can see everything I have. This wood is all basically, you know, ready to just cut up, use for signs, use for projects. Much better use of my storage. And then over here, I've got extra pieces of two by four, which always come in handy my spindle collection, some spools, small scrap wood, some salvage, and some ladder parts. So, y'all wanted to know how I organize? And that brings us to project number one. These beautiful wooden window boxes have been in my stash for over a year, getting moved around. We are going to turn them into gorgeous pumpkin planters. Today I'll be using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. I have the color Lantern 
and the color Pantry Door. Pantry Door is the gorgeous green, Lantern is the black. Now Milk Paint is a powder form. You mix it up a one-to-one -one ratio of milk paint powder to water. I'm using a blender here to help mix. You can also use a whisk or a fork if you need to. I always put my nice warm water in first and then my powder. I am not using any extra bond today since I am painting old raw wood. The milk paint should stick just fine. But if it's your first time using milk paint or you're placing your first order, I do recommend you order at least a sample size of the bond. That way you have it on hand if you need it. I'm using a plain old chip brush to apply this milk paint today. I don't mind if there's a little bit of texture through this paint. You'll notice the consistency I mixed it. It's not running completely off of the wood surface I'm applying it to, but the paint is also moving. So if you're finding that your paint's not moving around, it's probably too thick. If it's completely running down and off your project, it's probably a little too thin. You can adjust accordingly by adding more water or more powder. Just make sure you mix it well and always let your milk paint sit for a couple minutes before you use it. I only did one coat of milk paint on these boxes. There's a couple spots where the paint might be a little thin, but that helps provide this beautiful chippy look. Milk paint is great if you're going for that old, authentic, chippy finish. I've got 220 grit sandpaper here on my orbital sander. I give both these pieces a quick sand and then take them back upstairs to use my new JRV stencil. These pumpkin patch open daily stencils are available on my website under the JRV stencil collection. I'm also using my number 20 stencil brush and DIY beadboard for this stencil. When you're stenciling, you'll get just a bit of paint on the tip of your brush and you'll offload most of that paint onto another surface. Working with a very dry brush here, I'm pouncing up and down on my pumpkin patch stencil. The JRV stencils are made to be used over and over again so they are great for resellers or for someone who loves to make stenciled signs as gifts for the holidays you can wash them reuse them over and over and because they are thick they are extra durable got a little bleed through there on that first P because I forgot to offload, but no worries, I'm going to sand it back. I'm moving over to the other side here and you can see where I'm offloading there on my dry cloth. And you'll notice I'm creating my own design with the stencil. You don't have to use it exactly as it's laid out. You can mix and match your stencils for a unique look as well. The options are endless. went with DIY Hey Sailor on the green box. Y'all said you were really loving some of the muted tones for fall as well. Now I am taking my sanding block, just giving this stencil a little bit of a scuff sand and giving it an antiqued feel. I'm sealing these pieces up with the Sweet Pickens Milk Paint Oil Wax. I will brush it on with a chip brush, let it sit for about 15 minutes and wipe it back with a clean cloth. On the black box, I'm using clear oil wax, and over the green box, I use the white oil wax. Letting the oil wax sit will help it penetrate through that paint and deep into the wood. Notice how with this white oil wax, it gives it a beautiful whitewashed finish. I'm going to be doing a couple of arrangements with these boxes today. I'm using my tight bond glue and I will have all of those products that aren't on my website listed in my brand new Amazon storefront. Yes, you'll be able to find all of those products by clicking on my storefront. I have them categorized out conveniently for you. 
I added the two by fours in, glued those down with tight bond wood glue to give some height to this riser. Filling it up completely with floral foam would have been pretty expensive and my two by fours were handy and free in my garage. I did stick a couple of blocks of floral foam in just so this piece wouldn't weigh too much and now I'm using a combination of Gorilla Hot Glue and Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive to permanently place these pumpkins in. I also used some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree to fill in in between the creases. These pumpkins are a combination off of Amazon. I had two different sets I ordered. I loved how they provided the different sizes. Very cost efficient. I will have them down below as well. I'm going to put this muted tone pumpkin planter in my booth for $42.95. And here's a peek at the second planter. I did not permanently fix these pumpkins in, that way somebody could make their own arrangement. And it will give me a place to stage up my freestanding pumpkins in my booth. Now these sunflowers, we'll talk about them in a few because we're gonna head up next and organize my floral for the fall. What do y'all think of these two boxes? Leave me a comment below, which one is your favorite? So let me know, does this happen to you guys? When I start cleaning and organizing, I get totally inspired, which is why I always craft my stash as I clean. So I'm looking at my floral and I'm looking at my closet next to it full of all my little bits and bobs, thinking I totally want to get this cleaned up before I start crafting. My spring and summer floral is pretty picked over here as you can tell. I love to keep my seasonal floral in this shoe rack. It's just one of the plastic behind the door hanging ones and it's super convenient for easy access. What I'm not using for the season goes up in the top of this closet. Now it is time to go through this. I basically know what's here but I'm going to use these clear, I think they're, what, ice bucket? Yeah, ice bucket containers from the Dollar Tree. I had some floral in them, so they were covered in glitter. But that way I can see a little bit better what I have inside. On this side of the closet, I've got my floral foam, fabric, old empty cans, and then some hanging hardware and random screws. Down at the very bottom, my HVLP sprayers. After I gave it an organize and got everything all cleaned up, here's what we're looking like. Up on the top, I've got my vinyl, some scrap paper, ropes and belts. Moving down to the next shelf is an assortment of metal things, bases, handles, little accent pieces and hooks. Then we have some more random metal, and on the bottom, all of my wood. Here is a look at the back of my door. How gorgeous is all of this floral? <laughs> I'm so excited to start making now. Totally inspired. I'm to print off some cute labels for my new containers. Following the directions, I loaded the thermal paper, no ink required, on this printer powered it on by holding the button and doing a test print by pushing the button once. Scan the QR code, it will pull the nice. app up, download that, and you are ready to use it. The connection to your phone is Bluetooth, so no cords are required. I chose light mode today. I'm just printing off some very simple little labels, but if you follow some very basic instructions on the instruction booklet, you can make some super cute designs. If y'all are ready to get organized too, you can get 10% off of the Munbin Bluetooth Label Maker by grabbing the promo code from the description box below and clicking the link. So while I am grabbing the jars for my floral arrangements, I figured I would show you this little area in my garage as well. It is a metal shelving system that's on wheels. I can move it around if needed, but I've got all of my smalls organized into some separate containers. On the top, I keep a lot of my different shelves and metal kitchen items. On the middle shelf here, I've got some hanging plaques. In the middle, I've got a ton of glass jars. And I also keep frames on this middle shelf. 
That way, when something specific is low in my booth, I can come down to the box, I know where everything is, and I can grab out a few of each item that I need. The jars and the lids will be what I'm using today. I'm giving everything a coat of Rust-Oleum Hammered Bronze Spray Paint. Notice I am wearing protection so I'm not inhaling the fumes. Flipping everything over, letting it all dry for several hours after it has got a good coat. While it's drying, I took the glass jars upstairs. I'm using Dawn Power Wash, a razor scraper, and lemon oil to get all of the old sticky residue off. And just like batch painting, I'm doing some batch crafting. So while I've got everything out, I figure I'll make a few tin can arrangements as well. This baby bottle brush from the Dollar Tree is one of my favorite cleaning tools. The little bristles get in all the nooks and crannies just perfectly. And they're only a buck, so after you've used them, you can toss them and grab a new one. To make these jars appear more high-end, I wanted to make some wooden tops, but wood rounds are pretty expensive right now, so I got these thinner rounds and glued three together. Now I've got a nice thick round for the lid. I stained them up with DIY Dark and Decrepit, and now I am gluing the wood lid onto the metal lid using my tight bond glue. Next, I will drill a hole where I can thread some jute through to give it a cute little faux string handle. I threaded it through, tied a knot on the bottom, and glued it in place so it wouldn't pull through the bottom. And now it's time to paint the jars. I'm giving them a nice wipe down with rubbing alcohol. Even though I cleaned them, this is really going to help the clay-based paint adhere to the glass. Now I'm using DIY Prairie Gray and Tarnished Pearl. I have been loving this color combo. It is giving me such a beautiful muted brown gray color. Mixing that up and then I am using the original salt wash. I will have a link down below to find a retailer near you. The salt wash is going to add some texture into my paint. I want these little jars to look like faux crocs because I have an exciting new stencil to show y'all. I'm using a Zebra fan brush that is down in my Amazon links as well, and it does fan out really nicely over this round surface and give me great coverage. After one coat, I have good coverage. There's a little bit of streakiness, so I do go in and do another coat where the paint is a little thin. And here are the stencils that I want to use on these jars. They are the brand new JRV Croc Minis. It comes with eight mini designs. I'll be using DIY Hay Sailor to replicate that old, beautiful blue ink that you find on the Crocs. I'm using a stencil brush from Walmart. I am waiting very patiently for the JRV mini stencil brushes, the small ones, to be ready. As soon as they are, y'all will be the first ones to know and I will get them in stock. But it is giving me a beautiful pattern because those stencils are so amazing anyway. Now you see I'm mixing and matching again here with my stencils. The possibilities are going to be endless, you guys. After everything is dry, I'm down in the garage giving it a quick coat of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Sealer. Now I am taking an old piece of belt and gluing it around the metal lid. This is going to cover up the ugly metal lid and give the illusion of a more authentically old jar. Now this is why I love crafting my stash. I kind of had forgotten I even had these old belts. So I was planning on using some jute rope or twine and honestly this looked a lot cooler. All right, y'all, what do you think of these jars? Is this a hit or a miss? I love upcycling old mason jars, old dill pickle jars, and I think these have a total high-end look. Leave me a comment below. What do you think? 
Now I'll be selling these jars in my booth for around $8.95, kind of depending on size, but if y'all want to replicate them, you can find the stencils and the paint on my website, upcycledbybree.com. I decided to whip up some of these adorable little mini sacks as well. These are little cotton linen sacks down in my Amazon links if you want to check them out. I used the new croc minis and then also here on the right, these are the grain sack minis. First up, I'll glue a wood round down into the bottom of the sack using hot glue. Then using an empty pot or an empty baby food jar, whatever you may have, that goes onto the wood round. Next, a little bit of clean pillow stuffing and Spanish moss to fill the bag, then tuck in the floral of your liking. Once you have your floral tucked in, I did a couple of different color palettes. Tie it up tight and you're done. Simple and adorable. What do you think? Last project today, we are going to decoupage the tin cans. This is the JRV decoupage paper in newsprint. I love this one. It is vintage advertising, which y'all know has my heart. Using DIY liquid patina as my decoupage medium. Of course, you could use Big Top or Sweet Pickens Top Coat as well. Liquid patina has kind of been my go-to. I'm applying the patina gently smoothing the paper over the can and working my way around. Once it's on, I gently press it down just using my fingertips and then we do another coat of the liquid patina on top. The decoupage paper is 18 pound paper, which is thin yet durable. And of course it comes in the huge 30 by 20 sheets, but you can cut it down into smaller pieces for crafts this size. Once it's dry, I sand in a downwards motion around the edge to remove any of the excess paper. I have found this is the easiest way for me to clean up the edges. And then my favorite high-end tin can look. I'll be placing floral foam down into the bottom of this can. I'll use a razor knife to cut it to size, hot glue, and clear grip adhesive to keep it in place. I also like the round styrofoam from the Dollar Tree. I cut it in half and it fits in these cans perfectly. Once that's in place, I use some Elmer's spray glue and spray it all over the top of this foam. Then using some actual dirt, I'll sprinkle that on top and then place another layer of glue on top of the dirt to keep it all from falling out. Once the dirt is dry, I place a single stem or two of the Walmart sunflowers in, and I love this gorgeous, realistic, high-end look. Now it's that time, friends. Let me know below which project from today's video is your favorite. I will have to say the pumpkin planter boxes turned out to be my favorite. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. If that's the kind of thing you like, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Share this video with a friend who may be a maker as well or just needs help organizing their craft stash. I will see y'all next time for another fun video, but if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell next to it so YouTube will let you know every time I upload. Again, you can find everything I use today and all of my flips on my website, upcycledbybree.com. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends. How gorgeous this is. Okay, this is going to bother me. Okay. Oh, 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 whoa. A little OCD mixed in with ADD. All right. Oh. <laughs> it's fine.